Hey there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 13, Inequalities. Okay, we have an opening exercise here, writing inequality statements. All right, Tarek is trying to save $265.49 to buy a new tent. Right now he has $40 and can save $38 a week from his allowance. Wow, he gets a big allowance. Write and evaluate an expression to represent the amount of money saved after two weeks. Okay. So right now he has 40. So he's got $40. Plus 38 times times well forty dollars plus thirty-eight times two thirty-eight dollars a week, two weeks, thirty-eight times two. Okay, now we just simply do M dos. It says multiply first, then add thirty-eight times two. Eight times two is sixteen, carry the one, three times two is six, plus one is seven. 40 plus 76 is 160. Okay. So I wrote and evaluated how much money he would save after two weeks. Does he have enough? No. Okay, and it continues just like this. So three weeks, he's got $40. He can save 38 from his allowance. Three weeks. And Da says to multiply first. 8 times 3 is 24, carry the 2, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, 40 plus 1, 14 is 154. Close, but no cigar. Okay, next, $40 plus 38 times 4 weeks. MDOS says to multiply first, 8 times 4 is 32, carry the 3, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15, 40 plus 150 plus 100. Okay, so we still don't have enough money after four weeks. If we're saving $38 a week. We want $265.49. We're only at $192. So we need to keep it going. So week five is 40 plus $38 per week. So it's per, per times five for five weeks. 40 plus 5 times 8, 40, 34, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 4 is 19, 40 plus 190 is 230. Much closer, but we're still a little bit short. One more week might do it. And finally, we take 40 plus 38 times 6, which is 40 plus 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 4 is 22, 40 plus 228 is $268. So if we look back up here, 268 is more than 265, so we'd still have a few dollars, couple dollars left, some change left, and it took six weeks to save up for, what was it he was saving for? That's happened. <clears throat> okay. Week 7. Oh, we just keep right on going here. 40. Plus 38 times 7, 40 plus, I guess we really want to drive home PEMDAS here. 7 times 8 is 56, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 5 is 26, 266 plus 40 is 306. Okay, and then finally 8 weeks, 40 plus $38 per week, 8 weeks is 40 times, or 38 times 8. So the 40 we already had plus 8 times 8 is 64, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 6 is 30, 304 plus 40 is 340. Now the question asks, when will Tarek have enough money to buy the tablet? Okay, so if we go back, we want $265.49. 268 is more than 265.49, so we will have enough right here, and that is week six. Okay, so when will Tarek have enough money to buy the tablet? Six. Okay, 
says, write an inequality that will generalize the problem. Okay. Well, he can make $38 per week, plus he's already got 40 and he wants it to be not equal to, but he wants to be greater than or equal to. Oh, it erased it. 38W plus 40. And that's got to be greater than or equal to the price of the tablet, which is $265. Where W is the number of weeks he saved the $38. Okay. Example one, evaluating inequalities, finding a solution. The sum of two consecutive odd integers is more than negative 12. So from the last lesson before we went into algebra for or geometry for a little while, lesson eight, nine, two consecutive odd integers, well, if X is an odd integer, say one, next odd integer is three, that is one plus two. So if I don't know this odd integer, the next one is that unknown plus two. So the sum of two consecutive odd integers, first odd integer plus the second odd integer, which is this, is more than negative 12. More than is our inequality sign. Okay. Okay, so now if I solve this, x plus x is 2x plus 2 is greater than negative 12. Subtract 2, subtract 2, 2x two is greater than negative 14. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is greater than negative 14. Okay, <clears throat> now over here it says write several true in numerical inequality expressions. Well, we know, we know what numbers are greater than negative 12. So if I take 5 plus 7, I can say that's greater than negative 12. Because 12 is greater than negative 12. Those are two consecutive odd integers. And it is more than negative 12, so that's true. Okay, then I can go a little smaller. 3 plus 5 is greater than negative 12. 8 is greater than negative 12. That is true. A little smaller, 1 plus 3, so we're just decreasing our odd by 1 each time, 5 to 3 to 1, and adding the next smaller one. 1 plus 3 is greater than negative 12, that's 4 is greater than, 4 is greater than negative 12. Okay, um, if we go on to the next one, the next, neg um, the next odd integer less than 1 is negative plus 1 greater than negative 12. That's zero. It's greater than negative 12. And we can go on and on and on and on and on. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is greater than negative 12. Negative 4 is greater than negative 12. Okay. And we can continue in this fashion until we find the number that's getting closer and closer to negative 12 before we go beyond it. And I've already found that algebraic x is greater than negative 14. So that'd be negative 14, negative 12. <clears throat> All right, so now it says the sum of two consecutive odd integers is more than negative 12. Same thing. What is the smallest value that will make this true? Put right in any quality that can be used to find the smallest value that will make this statement true. Now, let me explain it a little differently now, because if I just say x is some odd integer, well, I could let x equal 1. I could let x equal 2, but then this is not odd. But we can find a statement that ensures our statement is odd. So if I take 2 times 1, that's 2. So even times an odd is even. 2 times 2 is 4. But even times an even is even. 2 times 3 equals 6. An even times an odd equals even. So look what's happening. No matter what I, if I multiply 2 by any number, I'm always going to get an even. So if I say 2 times any number, be it 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, I multiply it by 2, I'm going to get an even number. To get an odd number, I then would only have to add 1. So any even number plus 1 will give me an odd number. Next one. 
next number after two is three, three is up. Four plus one is five, five is up. Six plus one is seven, seven is up. So this is the actual expression for a job temperature. Just two times any number will give you an even. Add one to it and it turns a one. So now write a new quality confused to find the smallest value that will make this statement true. Well, here's my first odd integer. My next odd integer would be 2x plus 3. Okay? Because I have to add 2 to get to the next odd integer. If I only add 1, I'm back to even. It goes odd, even, odd, even, 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 even. So now I write my statement. 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 3 is greater than negative. Okay? 2x plus 1 is my first integer. 2x plus 3 is my second. The sum of them is greater than negative. Now it says use if then moves to solve the inequality. Written in part A, identify where the zeros and ones were made using the if then. So I'm going to rewrite that again. So that's 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 3 is greater than negative 12. Now if I combine like terms, some of you are still struggling with that. They're apples and oranges. Okay. 2x is an x. 2x is an x. Um, 1 is a constant. 3 is a constant. They don't have a variable with them. They are not like terms. Plus signs separate terms. So 2x plus 2x is 4x. 1 plus 3 is 4. It's greater than negative 12. Okay. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. That's going to cancel this, leaving me with 4x is greater than negative 16. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. And x is greater than negative 4. Okay. Alright, so what steps is this? Well, 4x plus 4, if I subtract 4 from both sides, that is saying that if a is greater than b, then a plus plus minus I subtracted. Then a minus four is greater than b minus four. Okay. Zero was a saying is if this is a, 4x is a, plus 4, 4x plus 4 is a, negative 12 is b, subtract 4 from both a and b, and the inequality is still going to be the same, greater than. Okay, then we say if a is greater than b, then a divided by 4 is going to be greater than b. By four. And one was the result. Four divided by four is one x. And that's what they mean by if this is. What is the smallest value that will make this true? Okay, to find the odd integer, substitute in negative four for x and the two x plus one. So this was our first odd integer, and I got x equals negative 4, so it's going to be 2 times negative 4 plus 1, and 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, plus 1 is negative 7. And the value that will solve the original inequality are all the odd integers greater than negative 7. So the smallest value that will make this true are negative 5 and negative because it's got to be smaller than this, not equal. It did not say equal. So it's got to be the next greater than negative 7 is negative 5. Okay, 
So this is your turn. Connor went to the county fair. Twenty-two dollars and fifty cents each pocket. He got a hot dog and a drink for three seventy-five, and then wanted to spend the rest of his money on ride tickets, which cost a dollar twenty-five each. Writing in equality to represent the total spent for hours the number of tickets purchased. So give this a shot, and I'll be back. In. Okay. So this is a new concept. Setting up an equation for a sentence. Okay. Here's his total. That's the total money in his pocket. Okay. He bought a hot dog and drink for three seventy-five. So we need a variable that will represent the hot dog and the drink. Okay. He bought a hot dog and a drink for three seventy-five. So we only bought one. Okay. And it's not a variable on the hot dogs and drinks. It doesn't ask how many hot dogs and drinks can he buy. He's buying one of each, and that is it. So this is my constant. Okay. And this is what you need to be able to do when you set up. Equation. What's the total? What's the constant? What's the variable? And how many are we going to multiply the variable by? Okay. The next thing he wants is ride tickets. Okay. So I usually use a letter that the names we're forgetting. So if we're going to use ride tickets, we can either use an R or a T for ride or tickets, but I have T for total. So I'm going to set this up without any numbers first to explain how to set up a sentence. Okay. So he's Taking is, I'm going to use R for ride tickets. Ride tickets are, so it's taking some number of ride tickets and there's $1.25 each. Plus, hamburger and hot dog, let's just call that F for food, equals the total. So $1.25 for one ride ticket, $2.50 for two ride tickets, and so on. So this is the nuts and bolts of this equation. Dollar twenty-five times however many tickets plus the food equals the total dollars, and then I substitute in everything. I know the ride tickets are dollar twenty-five. I know the food was three seventy-five, and I know the total was twenty-two dollars. Okay. All right. What we need to keep in mind is it's an inequality, so. This has to be less than or equal to the money he has. You can't spend more than you have. Okay? If they don't take IOUs at fairs. So here's our inequality. Now it says B. So so write an inequality represents the total. And that's all it asks for. So there's my inequality. B. Connor wants to use this inequality to determine whether he can purchase 10 tickets. Use substitution to show whether he will have enough. Okay, so this does not say to solve for R. It's asking if he has enough money to purchase 10 tickets. So use this equation. 1.25R plus 375 equals 22. Less than or equal to 22.50. R is going to be this 10. So 1.25 times 10 and placing R. Plus 3.75 is less than or equal to 22.50. Okay. One dollar and 25 cents times 10 is 12 dollars and 50 cents. Plus three dollars and 75 cents is less than or equal to 22.50. Combine like terms. Five plus zero is zero. Seven plus five is 12. Carry the one. Three and one is four, and two is five, and then the one. Okay? It's less than or equal to 22.50. So now that we're done, you look at the answer. It is $15.20 less than $22.50. Okay? Can I do this right? I don't know. Let's fix this. We're adding. Five plus zero is five. Seven plus five is twelve. Very good. We have the right amount. It's twelve fifty three seventy five. Yes, it's four and five is so three plus one is four. Four plus two is six. There's where I went wrong. All right. So sixteen dollars and twenty five cents is less than twenty two dollars and fifty cents. So this is true. So. 
I would say yes, he has enough money. the total maximum number of tickets you can buy based upon the given information. Now they're asking for the maximum number of tickets. So now I'm going to take that equation or that inequality we just set up. 125R plus 375 is less than or equal to 2250. Okay. 1.25R plus $3.75 has to be less than or equal to 2250. So now it's not asking us to, if we have enough money for 10 tickets or 8 tickets or 20 tickets. It's asking us how many tickets can we find. So now we just have to get R by itself by crossing sad back. PEMDAS backwards because it's an equation. We go the other way. So I have multiplication. I have addition. Sub subtraction. Addition. The inverse of addition is subtraction. And when I subtract these, I get 1.25R is to 0, is less than or equal to. And then I subtract here and get 5, 147, 21 minus 3 is 1875. And then to find R, this is multiplication. So we're going to do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. I'm going to divide both sides by $1.25. These cancel, and I get our number of ride tickets has to be less than or equal to, and 18.75 divided by a dollar 25 is 15. So he can buy 15 ride tickets, he'd be flat broke or less. Okay, number two. Write and solve an inequality statement to represent the following problem. On a particular airline, check bags can weigh more than 50 pounds. No more than, so that would be less than or equal to 50 pounds. Sally packs 32 pounds of clothes and five identical gifts in a suitcase that weigh 8 pounds. Okay. Write an inequality to represent this situation. Okay. So if she has five identical gifts, which we don't know, okay, call that G. So five gifts, okay. So if she packs 32 pounds of clothes and five identical gifts in a suitcase that weighs eight pounds. Okay, so that's eight pounds plus 32 pounds of clothes. So what this is kind of misleading, the suitcase weighs eight pounds. The suitcase with the five gifts in it does not weigh eight pounds. The empty suitcase weighs eight pounds. So we have five gifts that we don't know the weight of, the eight pound empty suitcase, the 32 pounds of clothes, and they cannot exceed. So they have to be less than or equal to. So this should have been worded better. That's a little misleading. So it should say, in a suitcase that weighs eight pounds, empty. Okay, you need to specify that, because that could be confusing, and you think that the five gifts suitcase total eight pounds. That's an empty suitcase. Anyhow, so we're going to combine like terms. 5G plus 40, or 8 plus 32, is less than or equal to 50. Now we're going to do SATMAP again, which says to add subtract first, we have addition. The inverse of addition is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. Okay, and I get 5G minus 0, which I don't need to write, and 50 minus 40. And I have 5 times G. The inverse of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide by 5, and 5's cancel. G is less than or equal to. Okay. The gifts cannot be more than two pounds. They can't be less, but they cannot equal more than two pounds. But they can equal two pounds. Okay. 
So you would say each um, of the five gifts can weigh two pounds or less. And that's the end of lesson 13. Hope you hear from us.